All right. Boom. Hello, everyone. Um, Joel Clark here. Um, successful kickstart guy. Publisher of Lone Wolf Fist, which, by the way, ugh, came in the mail today. We finally do an actual proper unboxing on this bad boy. So, um, I, I had my kids here the first time I got the original proof back from this, and uh, I was really excited to open it up, but like they kept like mugging for the camera and stuff like that, so I might release that draft someday. Um, but this is the this is the proof that actually has the the second draft edits and all that on it. So this is it's got the increased page size and all those wonderful things. A couple of different formatting issues I had to fix up. Um, the notable absence of a of an entire uh, artifact that got paid for by a backer, which I had to put back in. So. Couple of couple of different issues here, but we're gonna we're gonna do an unboxing today, and all of you who backed can expect one of these wonderful packages in the mail. Um, sent all but three of them out at this point. Just gonna get a nice little crack there. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with those particular three. Um, I'm gonna be following up on them. I've got this all put into a master document. Here we go. So yeah, you can see right there. One of these bad boys. Invoice. And the actual front cover. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? There you get that. Wonderful yellow spine and back. Boom. Look at those logos on there. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, I got the board width and spine bulk on the front cover, so that's nice. There's a little bit of a, a schmutz right there. Let's just get that off of there. Probably glue. Actually, it kind of smells like uh, ketchup. Yeah. Like a different finger here. Don't know who was eating over this and dropped their lunch on it, but whatever. <laughs> good, good job, USPS. Okay, so the book is, as you can tell, ridiculous. Uh, it's it's gigantic. We got around, right around three hundred and twenty pages. Um, there's a lot of texture on this front cover, but yeah, cover looks really nice, as you can see. A wonderful detail there. I had to redo the logo a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. It's got a wonderful heft to it, so when it hits the table, you can actually kind of, yeah, you can kind of you know, feel it. There we go. So yeah, this is another thing I redid was this. Uh, the interior was originally a different piece of art, as you know from the PDF. Um, I updated that because it was way too big and it was way too busy. Um, so we got that done. This got changed. Uh, these these are different. These all had underlines in the original draft. Uh, they're still a little light uh, because they are in blue. So this that came through is gray here, um, but that's all right. Let's see here. Yeah, the credits page got fixed. That was like, for some reason, I don't know why, just these few pages were formatted way up here. So that's all fixed and in a reasonable place now. So that's nice. We get to the core rules. Those look lovely as always. And you can tell that the page numbers are an acceptable size now. They were teeny, 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 tiny before. And now they are reasonable. They're actually legible. So that's great. All right. Looks like the art came out looking really nice. That's good. And I always want, I always kind of worry about the art and how it's going to look. Because a lot of times I have to resize these. Uh, yeah, like, here's the, the tank art. You can see that there. That looks really good. It looks a little bitty bit blurry, and it's not terrible. I may have to resize that in future runs. Let's see what else we got here. Any other nice big pieces of art? I know there's a couple. My favorite piece of art in the entire thing, the skulls, which is on the appropriately on the uh, Hazards of the World of Ashes and Ghosts page. Looks like these uh, the page numbers look really good in double and triple digits too, so that's good. Yeah, it's wonderful. You can see in the the kung fu techniques are all formatted really nicely. It doesn't bleed across pages, so all the techniques info is in one little easy to find chunk. You don't have to jump between pages or anything like that. So that's really nice. Uh, let's see what else here. I know I know there's some really nice art in the techniques section. Ooh, combat. All right, I was worried about this piece because it's very detail dense, and if you get that wrong, it looks really shitty. But this looks fantastic. Look at that. Absolutely crisp. Beautiful. Yeah. Mike Clevin did that one for me. That guy is really something else. This is another uh, sequence here that I was worried about. Um, this doesn't come through super big in the PDF, but in the actual physical book, it's a flip book. So 
and every page there's another stage of this fight right in the middle of the combat section so that makes it a little more fun to read you know uh, armor chart the charts came out looking nice and crisp the other one I was worried about let me see if I can find it oh yeah and some of these big ones look really good like look at that it's gorgeous the character one let's see all the splats look really nice you got stone blade there and you know, brotherhood of freaks and what else we got here i really liked um yeah i, I like this one quite a bit that's another one of kazuki's the five star spirits that's actually the resemblance uh of david ramirez by the way this is actually based on his face so i put your mug in there david deal with it got some really good ones in here and of course the mockingbird emperor uh, by Kimberly Clevin, another great artist that worked for me. Beautiful detail on the Mockingbird Emperor. Absolutely gorgeous little splat right there. Let's see here. Pistol Whip Strategy. Yeah, here we go. You can see this one. And there's a lot of like really dense detail with the dark in there. I, I like that kind of frantic energy with the fists too. This is a very Fist of the North Star image. Um, I love the size difference a lot. I think that really helps it. Path of the Bullet. There we go. Atomic Dragon Fist. I thought that, yeah, Atomic Dragon Fist has this gorgeous one right here with the flame getting blown out. That came out nice and sharp, too. I, like, I love that. Okay, there are some actually really deep... Uh, let me see. Let me check out the, the Lucid Nue because you know, the ones that I was worried about. There we go. Yeah, Tattoo Artifact. Hazy Cloud. Uh, the backer pointed out that I was missing this in the text. It was completely gone. So I added it back in uh, from my notes, and it looks really nice. So there it is. It's actually in there. Whew. That was a close one. I'm, I'm glad they pointed it out. This was, like, going to print. And, I, and, like, they pointed it out, and I was like, oh, God, I need another one. All right, so one more thing I want to look at is, yeah, these guys right here. There's a lot of charts in the lore chapter. These are a little dense. Uh, I had to mess with the fonts to get all the information to fit in them cleanly. But it looks like there's no bleed between them, so it's all legible. Some of it's a little bit teensy. It gets a little, gets a little teensy on a few of them. Um, but as you can probably tell, with my crappy resolution camera, it's perfectly legible. So that's really good. Uh, the fonts look really good. The actual binding of the book is really nice. Like you can see that wonderful little glue lump there, uh, and it's a big book too, so that's really important. Uh, but yeah, it. Uh, it's got a lot of heft. It's nice and dense. They do a really nice, thick, dense cover here. This uh, they, they did a great job binding the cover and uh, and making it nice and nice and chunky. Let's see here. Everything looks really good. Uh, I gotta tell you guys, um, this is a beautiful little game. Lots of lots of lovely information. In it. it is very information dense. Um, people who have been playing this know that. A lot of the information that's packed in here, it's it's optional stuff. Like there's an entire bestiary, there's an entire armory um, with artifacts and vehicles and things like that. Um, most of the rules are contained in the first few pages. I think that they really kind of dry up right about here. This is like the actual rule book part of the rules, and it is roughly 50 pages, like right around there. Which, I mean, like, that's not inconsiderable. That's a pretty complicated combat system, wound system. Um, there's, a, there's an action economy based on magical go-go juice called Prana. Like, it's it's pretty, like, there's a lot going on there. But the actual mechanics of the game, there you go. And this, this is options. This is how to run the game. This is gymming techniques. This is, like I said, bestiary character options. Uh, the biggest, the single biggest part of this book, as I recall is the techniques. So you go to the Utakala and let's see here, the Guptakala. Here we go. Yeah. And that takes you, yeah. So this chunk of the book, which is, let me see what page is this is. I love having the numbers here. Page 72 to page 132. So about 60 pages. That's all techniques. That's character options. That's the, the secret arts. That's where those are. Um, so a lot. The the other single largest part of this book. So game mastering is pretty quick. Uh, actually, I wonder how much time I spent page-wise 
in the domains section because domains was like what really my it was really my baby whenever I made this game. I really wanted to make sure the domains was a big deal. Uh, it's actually pretty thin. It's not much there. 163 to about 183, so 20 pages. Um, 20 pages worth of simulationism. If you if you really must critique it based on that, then understand that there's not a whole lot in there. Let's see. Uh, with armies, titans, and every kind of monster under the sun and the bestiary, we go from 185 to 216. So roughly about what, that 30, 40 pages. And then the armory with all the artifacts and vehicles goes from about 218 to 246. Again, somewhere in... Well, actually about 30 pages all said and told. Yeah, about 20, 28 pages. Yeah, and then lore is this last chunk of the book. Like, it's quite a bit. Um, oh, well, I guess it's not all. Because, like, lore is right before Apocrypha. And the lore is a dense section. Page count-wise, it's not too much. Uh, it's just this little chunk here, which is pages 248 to 277. About 30 pages. I guess each chunk is about 30 pages. I mean, to the Apocalypse Apocrypha which is all the different uh, minor clans and techniques. Um, and that, that rounds out the book. And then, of course, there's uh, the character sheets at the end, which I have other sheets aside from just characters, because I have the Disciples sheet here, uh, the Vehicles sheet, as you can tell, which has, I think, all the appropriate stuff on it. Techniques sheet, which is part two to the character sheet. So you actually have the character sheet, the classic one, slightly updated. Uh, and then you have the technique sheet. The technique sheet should be enough to write down all of your kung fu moves. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit richer than all that. And of course, I got the domain sheet at the end because I had to put that one in there. But yeah, um, it like I said, fifty pages of actual rules, and then two hundred and seventy pages um, <laughs> or so of um, well, no, I guess it's. Um, no, it's, yeah, about 270 pages of all kinds of cool options for the game. So that's that's our Lone Wolf Fist unboxing. You should all, uh, who you who have kickstarted this or bought a hard copy, this is what you're going to get. A beautiful cover, um, obnoxious yellow and purple, very eye-catching. You'll never forget this is on your shelf. Nice, sturdy binding, big, heavy book, um, wonderfully legible. Uh, it's just nicely laid out. Black and white, full art, tome of ass kicking. So look forward to it, and I, I hope to see you at the table. May your may your dice always roll sets, and may your fist find your enemy's jaw. This is Joel Clark signing off.